Hello and welcome to this video on help desk tickets in Trackit. You've probably already watched the overview video for Trackit, which goes through all of the modules at a high level. If you haven't watched that, I do recommend taking a look at that one just to get an idea of everything in general that you can do here in the system. In this video today, we're going to actually go into more detail of the help desk tickets and how to add tickets and change some of the fields and close them out, reassign them, that type of thing. So you can get more of an idea of what it's like working within a help desk ticket day to day. So first off, I'm already logged into my track it system here, and this is the view of the help desk that I have configured. I've customized my grid view, which there's a video on that as well if you'd like to know more information about customizing that. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. Let's talk about tickets here for a second in general. So tickets can be entered by the help desk staff. So by someone like myself who's logged in working in the system by just clicking on add new, new ticket. Tickets can also be added by end users using the self-service portal. They can log in and log their own ticket and those will show up here in the help desk grid. Tickets can also come in via email. So your administrator may have configured an email address you know, using your company email, something like helpdesk at yourcompanyname.com and you could email in a request and that will automatically convert it into a ticket. In any of those cases, there is a ticket source field that shows you where that ticket came from. So let me open up this ticket from reader requester and you can see that my ticket source here is technician portal. So that means this ticket was actually entered right into this technician portal right here. If it came from self-service, it would say self-service and if it came from an email business rule, it would say email business rule here. So this particular ticket layout you're seeing here is the default layout that comes with the system. Keep in mind your administrator may have modified your ticket layout to look different than this or to add more fields or hide some fields, but this is the default view. So you have a requester information, that's the person requesting the service or requesting help with the issue they're having, has their contact information. Additional information is somewhere where you can just type additional information about the problem that you always want to be visible. On the right, there's more information about the issue itself. So there'd be a summary of the problem, a category that it's assigned to, priority, the current status, it's open, closed, on hold, paused. All of these things are customizable by your administrator. You also see the technician information. That's the person it's assigned to and their contact information here. You can see if it's assigned to a group or not, who opened the original ticket, if there's a service level agreement assigned and if the milestones have been processed. If you're not familiar with the service level agreement setup and what milestones are, I would recommend watching the uh, administration configuration video on uh, configuring SLAs. And then there's also a place where you can link a solution. So this is handy if you want to keep track of how many times a solution is used to solve a ticket and rate how helpful your solutions are. Down here at the bottom, there's a set of tabs. The ticket notes are the default tab and user notes are the default view. If you want to see all the system notes associated with that, you can go ahead and check this box and then you'll see everything where the ticket was opened, it was assigned to someone, the clock was started to start tracking time, and any other information about the history of the ticket. The assignments tab, that will show you any child tickets that are linked to this parent ticket and attachments will show you any attachments that have been attached to this help desk ticket. Last and certainly not least, the ticket ID is always displayed here on the top left unless your administrator has changed that. And the template option here as well helps you put in tickets quicker for standard common tasks that you might see all the time, like a new hire, terminating user, a password reset, or any of those types of common tasks. When you select a template, this apply template button becomes enabled. And if you click on that, it will auto fill out your help desk ticket with all the information from that particular template. Let's go ahead and add a brand new ticket just so you can see how this works. The first thing you're going to do is select whether or not you're going to use a template. Let's say we are this time and we're going to say it's a new hire. I'm going to click on that, click the button. All my fields are filled out. Next, I'm going to put in a requester name. So I can click this drop down button here, which brings up a pop up searchable list of all my requesters. Or if I know the requester's name, I can just try to type it. And when I tab out, it'll try to look it up. If there's an additional callback number I need to add, I can do that should auto fill the rest of the person's information. The template came with this additional information, set up a new user account for network access. It automatically filled out the summary and the category, the priority and the status for me. If I want to change the category, much like the requester field, I could just start typing a category in here if I would like, or I can click on this pick list and I can drop this down and pick one of these categories, click OK. 
if there's a particular service level agreement along with whatever task you're putting in here, that information will fill out and the due date and response dates and all of those things will automatically fill out as well. If there's no service level agreement assigned here, you can simply click on the calendar and add a due date manually if you need to do so. For some of your smaller pick lists that have less values, you'll notice that your picker looks a little bit different. So for priorities, for example, there's no need to bring up a big searchable grid because you're not gonna have more than just a handful of priorities. So you get a simple pick list here. But you should also notice that at the top of the pick list, there's a little more link. If you click on that, it will actually bring up the browse window with all the list of all of the priorities or status values or whichever dropdown you're on and allow you to sort and search and all of that. Status is the same way, and you can customize this actually in the field customization tool if you prefer to have the pop-up pick list. So now that my top level of all my ticket information here is complete, I can come down here to the bottom. Notice I can't hit new to add a note yet. I need to actually save my ticket first. When I do that, the ticket ID will be assigned, and now I can add my note. So I click new. I can pick my note type. So for this particular example, I'm going to say ticket description because it's the first note I'm putting in. The activity code is just something to help you categorize your data. So here I can say original description since that's what it is. I can type some information in here and I can hit add update note. That note then gets added to my ticket down here and any other notes that get added to the ticket will be included here as well. If I go under assignments, You'll notice there's a check mark here indicating that there are assignments. These are the assignments that were generated with the template. Notice there are things for reserving an office location, provisioning a workstation, etc. If I want to add additional assignments, I could do that. I would just click New. I would get a similar ticket pop up in a new tab. I'd fill it out, save it, and that would become an assignment on this ticket. If I want to actually work on one of these assignments straight from here, I can just double click on it and it will actually open that assignment in a new tab. I'm going to go back to my apparent ticket here. If I want to add attachments, I can click the Attachments tab. I can click the New button, and I can go click Choose a File or pick a URL link to a file and hit Attach, and that attachment will get attached to this ticket. Now I can save my ticket every so often to make sure I don't lose my work, and notice Save doesn't close the window. There is an administrative option that your administrator can turn on or off, which would actually close this ticket window upon saving. That's a system-wide option that your administrator has the option of turning on or not if they wish. Let's take a look at the toolbar up here at the top. If I click on the email button, I will get an email set up here that's addressed to the requester. If I want to add other recipients to this email message, I can just click this little drop-down arrow. And notice the view here is set to all addresses. These are all the email addresses in the Trackit system. If I'm looking for just technicians or just requesters, I can do that. And I also have the option to add to the two line, the CC line, or the BCC line. I can put in a subject here. I can choose an attachment if I want to send an attachment along with this. And then down here, I can actually pick values from the ticket and say insert in the message body. And those values will be inserted right into the message body. So I can fill this out. And then I can click send. And this email will be queued for delivery. You'll notice if I go back to my ticket notes, the email is added as a note here, and Track It will go ahead and take care of sending that out. Now let's say I'm working with this requester and I need to search my solution database to try and find the answer to a problem. Let's go back to our main help desk to do that example and look for something that's an actual issue. So let's say user cannot connect. So we're going to say, hmm, this user can't connect to the Wi-Fi. Let's see, I think I've seen that before, but let me search for a solution to that problem. So I click the button. Notice the summary of the ticket is automatically filled in the search. And we automatically select any of the words and phrases to give you the best chance of finding a hit for your the problem that you're having. If you want to do all words and phrases, you can do that. That'll narrow the search even more. You can also use quotes and things in here, just like a typical search. But here's some possible solutions for you. It looks like none of these are, are actually the solution to the particular issue I have. However, just for example here, let's say the password reset one is the one that actually uh, solves this problem for me. So I'm going to click on that one. And notice over here to the right, you can see it says issues resolved. That's how many help desk tickets this solution is actually linked to in your system. And the star rating is the actual star rating give it to it by your end user requesters on your network. 
So let's say this one actually solves my problem. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click link. And it's going to ask me, do I want to copy the text of that solution as a note in my ticket? Or do I just want to link my solution to my ticket? So I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to just leave this as a note. I'm going to say that this is a technician note. And it's additional information I'm supplying. I'm going to hit add and update note. Notice now I get a note added that shows that the solution was linked. And I also get the solution ID linked here in the ticket. And if I click on this now, it will actually open that linked solution and show it to me. Once I save this, it's now committed. If I click this link again, you'll notice it actually says issues resolved too, because I just linked to this ticket here to solve this problem. So this open tickets button is interesting. You, it says open tickets for location, requester, or category. If you click on that, you'll notice you'll get a list of all the tickets open in that particular location. So see here, I have five tickets open, all in the location, California. So if I click on one, let's see ticket 107, and I say, okay, ticket 107 is gonna open up, and now I can take a look at that ticket. I could go back to ticket 116, and I can say, do I have other open tickets for this requester? Yeah, I do. So I could click on one of those and view that. Do I have any other open tickets for this particular category? No. So in this particular case, I only have one open ticket for remote connectivity, and it's the one I'm working on. So that's a nice quick way to do some ticket research. The assignment menu here allows you to assign the ticket to a technician. So if I click on that, I get a list of technicians. I can pick one and assign it. So I'm going to pick the help desk group here. I'm going to say I can assign this to Terry Fowler. OK. Are you sure you want to forward this to a technician in a different group? Sure. And now the ticket's assigned to Terry Fowler. I could come here and say, assign to a support specialist. That will pop up a list of all the support specialists for the particular category that I have selected. So in this case, for remote connectivity, I don't have any specialists set up in the system. But if I did, I would get a list of those here, and I could pick one. I can also assign to a group. I can assign to a technician. I could assign it back to myself, or I could clear the assignment completely. Under the Actions menu now, if I want to increment the call counter, I can do that. It's a simple counter. Every time you click this, it increments the counter by one. That's a field that you could add to this form in the form customization if you wish to do so. I can click Close Ticket. If I do that, notice the status goes to Closed. And if I turn on my system notes here, you can see that the ticket has been closed. I can reopen the ticket. If I do that, status gets back to open and shows that the ticket was reopened. Copy is pretty simple. I just click Copy, and it will copy this ticket into a new ticket. Clear form will clear the form, and obviously print and delete. Another thing to note here in these tickets is there can be default priorities and default due dates and things for some of these values. So sometimes you may select a category from the list, and a default due date will pop in there or it may prompt you for which specialist you want to use, or it may just auto-fill a technician specialist based on that category. Those are things that are configured by the administrator of your system, and so it may differ for your environment. Now let's go back to the Help Desk Grid here for just a moment and look at some of the actions that are available to you from the grid itself. So notice here that the Assignment menu is out here on the grid as well. So I can perform any of these assign actions right here from the help desk ticket grid rather than having to go into the ticket to do it. So if I want to grab one of these tickets and assign it to myself, I could, or I can assign it to somebody else, etc. So there's also a change status button on the toolbar. If I click on that, notice I have the option to change the status. So I could actually close this ticket. I can say that I repaired the problem. It's my resolution. I fixed it. Notice the private checkbox is turned on by default for technician notes. That means that these notes will not show up in the self-service module for requesters to see. If I put in a note here that I purposely want an end user to see in the self-service portal, I would simply turn off this checkmark, and that would make it a public note that they can view in that self-service portal. For now, I'm going to leave that private. I'm going to click Save, and you'll notice 119 will be closed and removed from my grid because my view is showing open tickets. Keep in mind there are a couple other ways that a ticket can be closed. You can have business rules that will accept an email inbound to the Trackit system with certain keywords in it to automatically close a ticket. That's something that's configurable by the network admin. 
and there's also the option for the self-service user to cancel out their ticket if they no longer need the uh, service or if they no longer have the issue that they had originally reported. So tickets could be closed in that way as well. That is a more in-depth look at working with help desk tickets in TrackIt. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside TrackIt. Some other useful resources are the TrackIt community, where you can talk with other TrackIt users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.